Hey guys, so you know on this channel about 99.9% .9 of the time I'm talking about very encouraging, motivational things. I don't like to talk about negative things. I don't like to freak any of you guys out, but if you're anything like me, then you can sometimes tend to doomsday things. And that's when you just go over situations in your head and usually you're predicting like the absolute worst possible outcome but if you're not careful then you know you could tend to ruminate over all of these crazy scenarios that may or may not ever happen and that kind of fear just creates this ball of anxiety where it just immobilizes you and I want to share with you my top five denture nightmare scenarios because I really think that these are relatively easy to address. I think that there is simple solutions to this. So if you have anything to add to this list, then just leave it in the comments section below and share that with us. So I, I'm listing this as number one um, and getting this out of the way because this is something that I talk about on this channel a lot but it's still very relevant so I'm gonna throw this one in this video and I think that the number one fear that people have is other people finding out that they wear dentures now I don't think it's so much that anybody's scared that other people will know they wear dentures I think that the source of that fear is being worried about how other people will respond how will they react to that if we could foresee you know into people's thoughts and you know minds and and with certainty know that they're not judging us that they're not gonna mock us or make fun of us or make us feel like we're less than you know if we knew that for sure then I think that we could throw that one off the list altogether so it's not so much that we're scared that people are gonna know it's we're scared how people are going to judge us if you go to you know a lecture or something and you see somebody on stage the speakers on stage and they are full of energy and they sound like they know their material they know what they're talking about because they've spent time researching and educating themselves they are passionate about it it's something they believe in like when they feel that that is exactly what they convey to their audience and you pick up on their vibe it energizes you and makes you feel like hey I know what he's talking about too and then you kind of latch on to their confidence that is how it is with pretty much anything that happens in your life including this if you appear timid like if you go and you see somebody on stage that looks like the the clear eyes dry eyes guy that doesn't seem enthusiastic about what they're talking about doesn't seem very sure it doesn't really even want to be talking about it isn't very confident fidgeting a lot and you know stuttering over their words things like that that is gonna also you know be communicated to the audience and nobody's really gonna take that person serious you just have to tell yourself there's no way around this anyways this is happening and if it's gonna happen I'm not going to carry this weight on my shoulder as like some kind of you know deep dark secret that nobody can ever know about yes there's probably some people lurking around in the shadows with their own little judgments about me probably people that I know very well that think poorly of me I mean that's just life that's how people are um, but nobody's ever said it to my face nobody has ever to my face tried to make me feel bad about any of this um, there's been some weird comments here and there on my YouTube channel, but this is YouTube. That is a given. Like people get really, really bold when they're hiding behind a computer. So that's not the norm. I've never experienced that in person with anybody. Everybody is very um, inspired. They think that I'm courageous and they appreciate the fact that I saw a problem in my life and I addressed it and used a positive outlook on the whole thing to improve my quality of life so that's the number one fear that i'm addressing i know i've really kind of beat this into the ground but i think that that's the most important thing is that when you overcome that that big challenge that's usually the biggest hurdle to overcome when you overcome that i think that anything is possible number two was hilarious because i'm pretty sure most of us have thought about this and that is your dentures flying out of your mouth. 
I've pictured it. I've gotten countless messages from people asking me, is that a real thing? Okay, so yes, it is a possibility. It's, it is a possibility. It's happened to people. It almost happened to me. But is it likely? Not really. It's not really likely, especially like what you imagine where you're in this like awesome moment of your life and at the worst possible time they just projectile across the room. I don't think that that's going to happen, I'm going to be honest. But there still exists the potential for them to pop out of your mouth. The reason why they pop out of your mouth, I think, because I kind of experienced this when I sneezed once with my, I think it was my temporary set, is the way that your cheeks kind of press on them. This is so weird to be talking about, but I just need to keep it real. I think, you know, I sneezed and thankfully I caught it like this, but I could feel it coming out and if it got past this little area of my mouth here, it would have forced. It would have forced. It would have fallen onto the table. I think I was at the table. Could have cracked, could have ended up on the floor. Bad things could have happened. Well, what happens when you get immediate dentures? You have your extractions, you get that set that same exact day, and they feel like they won't come out ever again because you're so swollen um, from the extractions that they are very, very tight because the mold was taken before you had your extractions and everything starts to kind of swell up there and they get very tight, kind of hard to pop them out. Suction is amazing. Um, but then as you start to heal, the swelling goes down and your gums begin the process of shrinking. Everything starts to shrink, gums start to shrink, things start to get loose. So within that first year of having dentures, <clears throat> They're gonna get really loose. You have to go back to your dentist to have frequent adjustments and relines. And you can go through some of my older videos to you know figure out what relines are, but it makes your dentures fit well. And depending on your situation, you may need three relines in a year. You may need five. And so that's why the dentures fly out of your mouth is when they're not fitting properly. So number one, you have to make sure that your dentures are always fitting as good as they possibly can. Make sure that you're investing in a good set of dentures, especially for your permanent set, something that is going to give you the best fit so that you can avoid situations like that. Um, now the next tip on that is you probably think I'm going to say something like, you know, we'll just glue those bad boys in, but I'm actually going to tell you the opposite. Yes, if it makes you feel more secure when you're going to a very important event, I can understand, use the adhesive, but when you start depending on adhesive for normal function, you are missing the opportunity to learn how to use the dentures without adhesive because it's entirely possible. <clears throat> I got to the point where I just thought it felt disgusting. I didn't like the way it felt. You know, once you've worn adhesive for a few hours, at least the kind that I had, I don't I didn't use the paste. I used the powder. But once it was, you know, time to go ahead and take them out and clean them, around that last hour or so, it got really spongy feeling and just gross, like liquid gets in there and it feels like mush, it's disgusting. I didn't like the way it felt. And so I, I didn't wanna have to deal with that. I wanted to be able to just put my dentures in and go. And so I started practicing everything I do on a daily basis with adhesive, I started practicing it without adhesive. So eating and talking, like at first it was very, it made me very anxious. Leaving the house and going to run errands for a full day, knowing that they're not glued in. What am I gonna do if they literally fly out of my mouth, you know? But the more I practiced, the better I got at keeping them in. So I went, you know, towards the end of my time with my dentures, I just didn't wear adhesive at all. It just, it felt cleaner, it felt more natural, if you could even say that when you have dentures. It just felt better to me because I knew that, okay, if I go to a restaurant and something gets in there, um, which can happen, especially if you're eating like peanuts or, you know, crunchy things and stuff like that, it, adhesive or not, it 
gets in there. I don't care about these food barriers that they advertise with the adhesive. Stuff will find a way to work itself in there. And I liked knowing that if I needed to, I could go straight to the restroom, rinse them out, put them right back in my mouth. We're done. Moving on. With adhesive, like, sometimes you have to pry them out of your mouth and I just didn't like that. So to avoid your dentures flying out of your mouth, make sure that you're um, going to get your adjustments and your relines, making sure that they're fitting properly. If it's time to replace an old pair, replace them. And also don't depend on adhesive because you will be amazed at how strong your mouth is and how it's just an instinctive thing to keep them in even when they're moving around. Um, so that's denture nightmare scenario number two. So nightmare scenario number three would be breaking your dentures. And yes, that is a real fear because you are probably very aware of the fact that these things that are your teeth that probably for the most part if you've been wearing them long enough start to feel like your teeth they become a part of you it's normal to you but you're also aware of the fact that they are not teeth and they are not indestructible they are made of acrylic which is very easy to break mine cracked i think when i bit into something i lost a molar even on one of my um hybrids that i had with the implants the the very first temporary set my molar popped off um, there's been people who've posted videos before on YouTube who had the same issue denture cracked and you know it just it's a possibility and so this is something that not everybody has an option to do because of you know money who has the money to go out and buy a second set of dentures I know if you invested in a really nice set of dentures it isn't a bad idea to get a lower quality denture just to have as a backup plan not every dentist has an on-site lab you know and if you break it there's a possibility that it would have to be sent off to the lab to be repaired and that would mean that you may have to go a day or two or even longer without teeth so if you have the option to do that that's something to definitely consider but the best thing to do is just to prevent it from happening in the first place and that's just to be consciously aware of the fact that if they fall there's a good chance that they could break so when you're cleaning them, I recommend um, cleaning them when you're, you know, cleaning them in the sink, keeping them as close to the bottom of the sink as you possibly can. Don't be all up here under the faucet and the sink is like way down here because you'd be amazed at how slippery these are just as they are. They're slick. The, the dentist or whoever made them polishes them. So they're very, very slick and add your cleansing agent to it like dawn which a lot of us you know clean the dentures with a dish detergent that's the most effective way to clean them then they're very slippery it's like butter they will they will fly they then they will fly out um it's happened to me several times and i'm so thankful that they didn't break but i learned from my mistakes and that is to just make sure that you are always floating like an inch or two above the surface so that if they do fall out of your hands they don't have a far way to go when you store your dentures make sure that you're storing them in the um the denture bath that has the lid that locks into place there's an actual purpose to that because if the thing gets knocked off of the counter and they fall they're still going to most likely be contained in the denture bath and anything could happen if you set them up on your counter in your restroom and you're getting ready and you've got the curl and iron going and the the cords swinging i mean things knock over setting them on your nightstand is not a great idea especially if you've got hardwood floors i mean in the middle of the night you have no idea what you're doing i know that i toss and turn and i've been known to knock over water that i've set on my nightstand so if there's dentures there like you could knock them off and break them so just always be mindful of where you're keeping them keep them in a safe location um keep them if you've got pets like cats like i'm a cat owner i have three of them they like to knock things over for no apparent reason other than to just do it the denture repair kits that you use at home i tried that myself once and i don't recommend it 
because it's not the same as if the dentist was to repair your dentures. It was very rough. It tasted like I had an entire nail salon in my mouth. It was disgusting and the it didn't last anyways. So I, I would definitely not do that. And you could void any kind of warranty that you have on the dentures if you try to repair them yourself. So that's that. And that brings me to my next fear would be that you would have to go without your teeth for any reason at any point in time. That is still something that I just don't want to do. But I've kind of come to terms with the fact that, you know, if I've already gone through with overcoming the fear of getting dentures in the first place and losing my teeth, like, I think I can handle it. Um, hospital stays. There's times when you may have to go for surgery and they'll ask you to remove your dentures so that you can go through with surgery and that's just you know a liability issue on their part it's also for your own safety because during surgery people have swallowed not swallowed but their their denture especially the bottom one um, could get lodged into your in your throat and so it's especially dangerous if the person that's operating on you doesn't even know that you have dentures, then they may not even know what's going on and why you've suddenly flatlined. I mean, I get it. You don't want to have to go without teeth, but there's certain situations in which you might have to. So just address that with the hospital staff beforehand. They could always make sure that, you know, they don't remove your teeth until any kind of guests that you have with you are out of the room and that they make sure that they return your teeth to you before anybody else comes in if you're scared of you know your family or friends seeing you without them hospital staff i would not be concerned with that they have seen everything imaginable they're not thinking about you like that they're they're trying to keep you healthy and keep you safe saving lives and stuff as soon as you're gone they're not thinking about you so don't let that you know become a paralyzing fear of yours um, also in the event that you break your dentures there could be a situation where they have to send it off for repairs um, I've gone over this myself I knew that that was a possibility from the get-go and the only thing I would do is I would just order a surgical mask or ask the dentist if I could have a surgical mask and I would wear that it, I'm not you can't stop life just because you don't have teeth life goes on the show goes on and so if that's what you need to do that's what you need to do but aside from those things you know there there's just certain situations that I have not encountered yet um, but that could happen at some point in the future and I'm prepared for that I'm I know that I will get through it and nothing bad is going to happen I may not feel too great about it when it happens but um, it's life and you just got to kind of deal with it as you go. If any of you have had to go for an extended period of time, especially hospital stays, a lot of people want to know how that works out. Now I had my child, um, Nova, when I had dentures and they didn't make me take them out um, and they knew that I had them. So if you've got any experience with that, share it in the comment section below. Dentist's office, ask for a surgical mask. Even if you're not in front of other people, if you don't want to sit there and talk face to face with the dentist without your teeth in, they should have no problem giving you a surgical mask so you can, you know, feel comfortable. That's what I do every single time I go. And the last fear would be ending up with ugly dentures, dentures that you're not happy with, dentures that don't suit your appearance. Um, always a possibility that's something that I was worried about but I knew no matter what they looked like they couldn't have been any worse than what I already had with my natural teeth so I was totally prepared for that but I still you know obviously didn't want to have dentures that I wasn't happy with um, a lot a lot of people well, not a lot of people some people have commented on my videos saying well you know some people can't afford the super nice dentures like you have and really nice you know expensive teeth and I want you all to know that when you go back to every video that I made in 2010, 2011, all the way up to August of 2012, I had the absolute cheapest set of dentures that you could possibly get here in Jacksonville, pretty sure of it. They were, it was like $800 a set and I absolutely loved them. I always got compliments on them and sure they weren't as nice looking as what I have right now. But they looked great on me at the time. And, you know, it's always a possibility 
to it's not like it's something permanent like if you at some point you want to replace them which those were temporary and in, anyways they have to be replaced after a year then you could upgrade to something nicer but the thing that I want to really drive home here as far as avoiding getting dentures that don't look right is number one you need to know where you're going to get them done make sure that you've done your research on the dentist that you're going to check out online reviews they're not always completely reliable but if you see one review after another saying this dentist basically tortured me and gave me like bogus looking teeth you know whatever then you might want to kind of avoid them if you have any friends you know ask for recommendations things like that understand that your general dentist does not do a lot of dentures a regular dentist only you know most of them haven't had a whole lot of experience doing dentures when they were in school they weren't spending all of their time just doing dentures perfecting their skill there and then the clients that they get or the patients that they get on any given month like there's not a lot of denture patients that they get compared to people coming in for routine cleanings and fillings and stuff like that and so even if he's known to be like the best dentist out there if he or she does not have a lot of experience making dentures then it doesn't matter how good of a dentist general dentist they are they aren't gonna make that great a set of dentures for you so make sure that they have experience making dentures see if they have any of their work advertised for dentures specifically my dentist here in Jacksonville Dr. Davis he had a book that he set out on his counter in the reception area that had just page after page of before and afters of all of the work that he's done and so I felt pretty confident that he was gonna give me something that looked really nice and he did and it was very 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 cost effective for me the wax try-in now you're not to have a wax try-in when you get your immediate set but when you replace that set with the final set of dentures you're going to go through a wax try-in process where you can have more control over the outcome you can select the tooth size shape color and they set all of that in wax and it looks pretty much just like the final product will look in your mouth um, the position of the teeth the size and how they look with your face and everything like that like you can pretty much take that to the bank so if somebody tries to tell you oh well don't pay attention to this the way it looks right now because that's gonna be different when you get your set it's gonna look pretty much the same they're gonna use the same teeth so if they're too big and funny looking in the wax mock-up they're gonna look too big and funny looking in the final product also so make sure that you don't sign off on a wax try-in that you're not happy with ask about the refund pro policy up front ask you know if if I'm not happy with the wax try-in and I decide that I don't want to go through with it I don't want to purchase your dentures can I get my money back for that if you do end up signing off on the wax try-in and paying your money and leaving with a complete set of dentures it is very very rare that they will remake those dentures because they have already invested all of that time not just for them their staff the lab that they were using you know people got to keep the lights on and so it's not common for them to just make you a totally different set if you told them when it was in wax that you were happy with it and then all of a sudden you know a week two weeks a month in, you're just not happy with it unless it was some kind of like serious error on their part then that's just not likely so um, make sure that you address that with them up front also there's been a few situations where I've talked to people who were, had really understanding compassionate dentists that took a loss on their denture and remade it they had it remade but it's just not common so those are my five denture nightmare scenarios. You can follow me on Instagram. It's Callan Jacks on Instagram. IWearDentures.com. I wear dentures on Facebook. Uh, Christy Lind on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you get all of these updates sent straight to your inbox. And you guys have a great day.